Ravens 49ers on Christmas night. What a way to end the weekend. It's number one versus number two in the PFT power rankings, which are final and binding on all things NFL. I think most people would agree that these are the best two teams right now in football, 11 and three versus 11 and three. The 49ers are only favored by five points. Now, they're trying to spin that into disrespect of the Ravens. I think that shows great respect of the Ravens. I think the 49ers should be double-digit favorites in this game. Wow. And it's a hell of an opportunity for the Ravens. As I said yesterday, maybe, I, I don't know. I said it somewhere, wrote it somewhere. Maybe I said it on the PFTPM podcast. But all this talk about who's the MVP from the 49ers, is it Brock Purdy, is it Trent Williams, is it Chris McCaffrey, is it Debo Samuel? If the Ravens win this game... That solves the problem. It's Lamar Jackson. It, it, yes. I mean, certainly. He's right on the cusp of being in, you know, right right up there with Purdy and McCaffrey and Tyree Kill, right? Dak Prescott, you know, who certainly took a hit last week, and I don't know if it's it's going to be capable to overcome that unless he makes magic here at the end. But, yeah, I think he goes very near the top if they pull off this victory. Now, if they pull off this victory and win and Brock Purdy and McCaffrey still go off and play awesome too, you know, then it's going to come down to the, the finish line in Week 18, certainly. But, no, Lamar deserves to be in that category. And, you know, like, I don't think it should be more than five points. I don't think so. I mean, the Ravens won. I think they posed some problems to the 49ers. You know, the first thing we talk about is the physicality of the 49ers. The Ravens will be able to match that. They'll be ready to go. You know, the 49ers will not be able just to say, oh, we're going to overpower them in our run game and, and make that happen. Not against this group. Now, I do think you can run the ball on the Ravens a little bit, so they got to stay patient there, right? Uh, so that'll be interesting. And then, of course, Mike McDonald and what he does with that Ravens defense on that side of the ball, I'm sure he'll have some tricks and some you know, outside-the-box thinking to combat some of Shanahan's stuff there. That's going to be a really interesting matchup. And I think on the other side of the ball, too, Mike, you know, same thing. You know, the Ravens, again, they're one of the few teams in football they are going to go, I know your D-line's awesome, 49ers, but we're not scared of it. We got an awesome offensive line, and we can run and throw. We're going to make you defend both. So this will be a real test for the 49ers defense. I mean, I expect a really good one. Obviously, the 49ers are better, but I do think there's some things in this matchup that the Ravens bring to the table that will give the 49ers some issues in some areas. Lamar Jackson was asked about this notion that it's a Super Bowl preview. Obviously, the two teams met in Super Bowl 47 with the Ravens winning. Lamar Jackson said the Super Bowl is in February. We're in December right now. And the best news for the Ravens, it's going to be Christmas Day, and Lamar Jackson hasn't suffered an injury. We've seen injuries each of the last two Decembers. Late in the year, banged around, and undermines the ability of the Ravens to, to try to get as far as they can go. This year, he's still good to go. And this year, they may be the one seed again. That's what they're chasing. The Super Bowl doesn't matter if you don't get there. And they're not going to, well, they're going to have a harder time getting there if they're not the number one seed. They, they need this win. And I think for their own confidence that they could get there and win. This would be something. If they go to San Francisco and win this game, if there would be a Super Bowl rematch, they're going to have a hell of a lot more belief that they can beat them on a neutral site if they find a way to beat them in their own building. Oh, 100%. You know, I mean... Uh, if it did end up being a rematch for the Super Bowl, it would only make it that much more personal. That late in the year, we lost to you guys. We think we're better. You know, that'll make it for truly like one of the most physical Super Bowls we've ever seen with these two psycho teams and psycho head coaches. But, yeah, this is a, these are two teams that are used to being the bully. And the 49ers, they, they rub it in your face. You know, that, that's what's cool about the 49ers. They're a little bit of like, you know, 85 Bears-ish or whatever. They go on the field and they yell and they puff out their chest and they, they tell you we're more physical and we're going to bring it. And the Ravens, of course, they aren't going to back down from anybody. You got the two top scoring defenses in football going at it. Both offenses are, what, top five in the game. Both defenses are both top ten in total as far as yards allowed. There's so many interesting things here, right? The 49ers got to worry about stopping the Ravens' run game. Ravens, run the freaking ball, right? Stop trying to justify Lamar's 
contract, Zay Flowers first round, Rashad Bateman first round, right? All this OBJ's contract, Todd Munkin. They are at their best when they run the ball. Take a page from the 49ers. The 49ers, Brock Purdy, nobody's thrown the ball less in football this year than Brock Purdy. He's got the least attempts in the game, and yet he's second in football in yards only behind Tua. You know, so you could still be explosive on offense and not throw the ball a ton. And that, to me, is where the Ravens are dropping the ball a little bit. And you saw the second half of that game last week. Damn, they ran it on Jacksonville at, at will. And I just feel at times lately they're a little too into justifying all those other things we talk about, and they're at their best when they play through the run. I don't have time to get into all the numbers, but just pull up the 49ers schedule when you can. Yeah. And look at the scores. Oh, I know, You right? take away this donut hole that was sparked by the loss in Cleveland where they were lost three in a row. They came out of their bye, and they have kicked the crap <laughs> out of have, everybody. I know. Home or away. 34-3, 27-14, 31-13, 42-19, 28-16, 14, and 45-29. All right, we'll see what happens Monday night. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.